ವಕ್ರತುಂಡ ಮಹಾಕಾಯ ಸೂರ್ಯಕೋಟಿ ಸಮಪ್ರಭಾ ನಿರ್ವಿಘ್ನ ಕುರು ಮೇ ದೇವಾ ಸರ್ವಕಾರ್ಯು ಸರ್ವದಾ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ನಮಸ್ತುಭ್ಯಂ ವರದೆ ಕಾಮರೂಪಿ ವಿದ್ಯಾರಂಭಂ ಕರಿಷ್ಯಾಮಿ ಸಿದ್ಧಿರ್ಭವತು ಮೇ ಸದಾ ಗುರುರ್ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಗುರುರ್ವಿಷ್ಣು ಗುರುರ್ದೇವೋ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಗುರುರೇವ ಪರಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಇನ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಏಯ್ಟೀನ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಮ್ಯಾಗಝೀನ್ ರಿಲೀಸ್ಡ್ ಅ ರಿಲಿ ಸ್ಪೆಷಲ್ ಎಡಿಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದರ್ ಪಬ್ಲಿಕೇಶನ್ Can we turn the volume down a little bit? I'll increase my volume. And this edition was on the science of happiness. There's lots of awesome articles in this edition. If you get a chance, please read it. One article that particularly caught my attention was where they listed the happiest profession. I think from like 1 to 50. So I'm going to check in with all of you. We'll just go with the top three, okay? What do you think the third happiest profession in the world in America is? Take a guess. Third happiest. Barista. Someone said a barista, sure. <laughs> teaching makes sense the answer is firefighters number three is firefighters and if you technically think of their job it's very dangerous especially now with climate change but they're number three number two a letter carrier yes and an anesthesiologist who knows why you thought that <laughs> a lot of drug usage <laughs> It is ticket collectors, people who are at concerts and shows who collect those tickets. Everyone's so excited to be there, so they feel they're part of that excitement. Now, to your guess, physicians and pharmacists are very low on this list. <laughs> as offended as you are, you can <laughs> deal with it with Time Magazine, okay? And number one? <laughs> <laughs> Renunciates, sure. Religious leaders. Religious leaders. That's right. The word they used is the clergy. Those who study and share matters relating to divinity. Firefighters, ticket collectors, the clergy. So in this room, I don't, I don't think anyone <laughs> fits into those categories. <laughs> And the implication of this observation with a lot of science and, and surveys is that people, when their feelings are distilled, are more interested in meaning than money. Firefighters don't make that much money. Ticket collectors, probably less. The clergy don't make anything. <laughs> so they're more interested in meaning than money, and if I can change the language to, their EQ is going to lead them more in life than their IQ. And so I'm checking everyone here. For those who are caregivers, 
What are you encouraging the next generation to become? No comment now, correct? <laughs> and I'll remind all of you, it was very powerful. In 2019, when we had our opening of our youth camp, there was around 100 high school students sitting in the front and 100 parents sitting in the back. And I told everyone, look at me in the eyes. And I asked each of them the same question. I asked the high school students first, are your parents teaching you to be good or smart? So EQ or IQ? And unanimously, the high school students had their hand up for smart. Then I asked that same question to the parents, are you teaching your kids to be good or smart? And they unanimously had their hand up for good. <laughs> In the same room, there was so much disconnect. They thought they were teaching goodness. They were feeling that they were learning smartness. So we're pausing to check. Are you living for money or meaning? It is for meaning. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. We are engaged in a workshop on Right. Rightness, in English is called righteousness, in Sanskrit is called dharma. Our workshop is on right, rightness, righteousness, on dharma. And I pointed out that we're going to flow through four rights. And if you take four rights, where are you? Exactly where you are now. I was discussing with some of our devis. We have a yatra, our 16th yatra is going to be starting on September 11th. It's through the Canadian Rockies. It's just for devis. The word yatra comes from the root ya, which means to go. When we think of a yatra, you go. You go to Canada, you go to Trinidad. But on our yatras, it's not about being a tourist. We've all gone to so many places. We've gone to Mexico. We've gone to Jamaica. Ya also means to move. To move within. Moving within is called centering yourself. Now, an observation for all, particularly those who are sitting on the ground, I have interacted with a whole lot of young adults in the past 15 years, a whole lot of young adults in the DMV. See how yeah, that was cool, right? I <laughs> called it the DMV. <laughs> and I've seen strong high school students, like lots of you. Strong college students, like lots of you. But once you get into a serious relationship, Suppose you get married. I have found those same strong high school students and college students start to feel stress in that marriage. And marriage is hard. Nobody's denying that. But they normalize the stress. Again, the same strong students that I have taught for 5, 10, 15 years, they normalize that stress. And now they don't do anything about it. It's become normal so that when they choose to have a child or children, what comes with that? If you don't tend to stress, what does it turn into? Anxiety. A lot of younger parents, whom I know, whom you know, their fabric is now of anxiety. And I keep sharing with them. And I'm sharing this experientially. I'm not telling you this as someone who's not married and doesn't have children. As your dharma increases, meaning your responsibilities grow, what also has to grow? Your sadhana, your centering. There's a thunderstorm outside. When there's a thunderstorm, you have to center yourself more in the sense that you have to drive slower, correct? You have to have more lights on. So please, keep that in mind. 
And I was interacting with some seekers here whose family members are not doing well, maybe they're aging, they're in a different hemisphere. When times are tough, that's when you need to be tougher, not give up the rightness or the sadhana. Bhagavan Krishna never got to be a child. As soon as he was born, where was he born first of all? In prison. And then he was sort of abducted, sort of. He was taken away from his biological mother and brought to a foreign area. And as soon as people came to know that he was there, assassins started to come. He never got to be a child. Agreed? Bhagavan Rama did get to be a child to an extent. But Bhagavan Krishna was always childlike. Even as people were trying to kill him, he was smiling. And that's why we're so fond of Bhagavad Gita. Now, if you Google what Bhagavad Gita means, it will share the divine song. Yes, the divine song. But for practical reasons, if I follow this song, I will feel divine. Maybe I can share this more clearly with, what does Ramayana mean? What does Ramayana mean? Now you're going to tell me the path of Rama. Yes, we have Balavira classes that show his padukas going from here to here. But the practical meaning of Ramayana is the path to Rama. What does Rama mean in English? Joy. That if I live like Bhagavan Rama, then I will feel Rama, which means joy. I was sharing with our young adults, the word rum comes from Rama. <laughs> There's so much of a connection between Sanskrit and, and English. So we are listening to this song. We want to follow this song to feel divine. Chapter one, or the first track on this album, what does it focus on? What is the key word? Fear, vishada, stress, anxiety, and so on. If this is the symptom, there has to be a source. The theme of chapter two? Source. Selfishness. And you know this. When you are being selfish, you can't enjoy what you're doing because you know it's wrong. There's no rightness there. Track three? selflessness. It will take us a lot of time and effort to grow out of selfishness because we feel that's how we're supposed to be. Kill and be killed. Might is right. Yesterday we explored verse 8 of chapter 3. I'm rechanting this for everyone. <coughs> Niyatam kuru karmatvam Karma jayo hya karma naha, shari rayatra pichate, na prasiddha yeta karma naha. The word yatra is used in this verse also. The main message that Bhagavan Krishna is sharing in this verse is that action facilitates function. Bhagavan shares that if you don't act, your body cannot continue. Your body can't go. Fine. So, so many of us act. We acted all day. But the finer teaching in this verse is the right action is what facilitates evolution. Action facilitates function. The right action facilitates evolution. Action facilitates IQ. The right action facilitates EQ. The way that we tried to personalize this verse is to go through the pancha karma. Five actions starting from the least right to the most right. Number five in Sanskrit and English, 
Prayashchitta karma in English means rehabilitation actions. These should be so strong that that rehabilitation is internalized that we won't do it again. Please remember that. If you do it again, your prayashchitta karma was not personal. It was not internalized. Number four, nishiddha karma. In English, immoral actions. A way that a lot of us get into immorality is through the internet. Correct? What is one of the most searched words on the internet? Pornography. It is one of the most searched words in all countries, especially those countries where it's banned. It's even more searched over there. The internet has increased our immorality. I was sharing with our young adults, in terms of violence, DIY, sorry, DIY, do it yourself, DIY, kits on making guns are becoming more and more prevalent. And that's come from the internet, correct? If there was no internet, how would I find out how to order these parts, how to make these parts? And so, some years ago, in my own mind, I had written the social media sutras. These are sutras on how to use social media. One of these sutras is, use social media in public. Use social media in public. So now what do I mean by that? Your phone right now, imagine what's on your phone was put on that screen over there. You know that big screen we have in this room? Would you be comfortable with that? The things that you're texting? The things that you're searching? Are you sure? Should we do it? Why don't you give me your phones? We'll go, <laughs> we'll go through that. And I remember when I used to travel through Europe and I used to go to an internet cafe, right? Everyone can see what you're looking at. And that's not a bad thing, that's a good thing. Then the propensity of you doing that which is immoral on the internet is less. Fair enough? How to regulate that? Nishiddha karma. What's number three? Kamya karma. In English? Selfish action. It is where we do things in a ritualistic way. I do this because I'm supposed to. Then I do that because I'm supposed to. And the problem with this is, I don't know how to stop then. In Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavan Krishna sends Akrura to Raja Dhritarashtra to go and educate him that he can prevent this war from happening. So Akrura goes to Raja Dhritarashtra and says, be objective with your son, with your children. They're engaged in wrongness, not rightness. And what does Raja Dhritarashtra say to Akrura? I already know this. You don't have to educate me about detachment, attachment. I just can't act on it. I don't know how to follow through on this. That would be the case for a lot of us in terms of, let's just pick on attachment. Who here doesn't know that attachment is unhealthy? But who here is free from attachment? Correct? And a lot of that is that the world revolves around me. So if I'm doing it, it's right. But it's not right. It's still kamya karma. Number two, naimittika karma. In English, special responsibilities. This is your special responsibility. In comparison, being part of a study group would be your regular responsibility. Yes? Pujaswami Chinmayananda has given a brilliant phrase, which is, do your best and leave the rest. Do your best, nitya karma. Regular responsibility. And if you are doing your best, you will naturally be adaptable, so you will leave the rest, which is your special responsibilities. The less trained you are in your regular responsibilities, 
the less you'll be able to engage your special responsibilities. Good? Pancha karma, right actions. Shall we continue? Okay. How many of you come to Chinmaya Somnath? Let's just pick Sunday morning. How many of you come to Chinmaya Somnath on Sunday morning to teach, to clean, to learn? Okay. How many of you come to Chinmaya Somnath on Sunday morning cheerfully? You know I can see what's in your minds, yes? See, there's a significant difference between the right action. It, the right action is to come here on Sunday. But there's a difference between the right action and the right action with the right attitude. Next, our focus is going to be the right attitude. Before I open this up, there is one Devi, a mother I had met, who told me, She's from the Maryland area. She has two sons who are grown up now. My kids have two choices when it comes to Balivar. They can come to Balivar with a smile on their face, or they can come to Balivar with tears in their eyes. <laughs> but either way, they're coming to Balivar. So if that's locked in, why would you choose to come with tears in your eyes? You may as well come with a smile on your face. Same here. You're here now. Just smile. <laughs> What's the point of visualizing you not being here? You're here. <laughs> we are going to the next verse of chapter 3, from 8 to 9. This is a lovely verse, Pujaswami Tejo Mayananda told us we had to memorize this. I'm, I'm using the book that he had given me. Yajna tat karmanon yatra Loko yam karma bandhanaha tadartam karma kaunteya mukta sangha samachara Yajnyatat, for the sake of yajna, karmanaha, action that is done for the sake of yajna. Anyatra, comparably, lokaha ayam, in this world, karma bandhanaha, generally actions bind us. Tadartam, therefore you should act with the meaning of yajna, kaunteya, another name for Prince Arjuna. And as you're engaged in this action, this is the critical part, mukta, tell me what that means in English, be free. Sangha, attachment in this reference, samachara, engage. Engage in the right actions, and now with the right attitude, that whatever is happening in the action and in the result, that you will not be attached to this. Translation works for everyone? Okay. I shall start to summarize and give us our next framework. What Sri Krishna is sharing in the ninth verse in a very simple way, dedication pulls purification. Dedication pulls purification. If you act, but dedication is not there, what happens? You function, but there's no evolution. But if you act with dedication, it will pull to you purification or evolution. Do you agree with that? Today when our high schoolers went outside for athletics, it was hotter today than yesterday. But they took way less breaks and worked way harder. And surprisingly, more are here today and more are sitting on the ground. So what happened? When I asked them, it's, they said it's because they had ice cream before athletics. <laughs> See how conniving they are? They want ice cream before athletics every day. <clears throat> but really what happened is that they were more immersed. They were more dedicated to athletics and look what came with it. Less needs, less complaints, more evolution. This is all the truth that we're exploring. I want to focus on Bandaha a little bit. In our Upanishad, our rishis have taught us about 
what? Hridaya means. Hridaya is actually made up of two compounds. Hrit, H-R-T, means I. And ayam means this. So hrit ayam becomes hridaya. It is the feeling, I am this. I am this. So if I asked all of you, who are you? How would you respond? I am this gender. I am this nationality. I am this hair type. <laughs> I am this mood. And that binds us, doesn't it? I heard an awesome statement that said, if you don't have a public image, you have nothing to maintain. But as long as you have that public image, that social image, you have to do so much to maintain that, correct? I wanted to shave my head for so long, but my wife has prohibited me from it. She said, Nishidda karma. <laughs> but if I don't have any hair, everything becomes so easy. I save on shampoo, I save on water, I save on time. <laughs> and my point is that built into how we live and how we identify is, I am this, and we keep getting bound by it. So in the Upanishad, it's called the Hridaya Grantihis. The knots that we feel, the conditionings that we feel, that's what Bhagavan Krishna means here by bandaha, sangha, or attachment. You're with me? Okay. Now one more insight into yajna, then I will give you this framework. What does yajna mean? Tell me in English. Can you tell me not like a robot, please? <laughs> Generally, when you look at our translations, even in my book, yajna means sacrifice. Yes? Okay. Now think of this practically. What comes first? Sacrifice or dedication? What comes first? What comes first? <laughs> I told you not to be robots. <laughs> I had started going to Cleveland in January of 2014, and I would started teaching Bhagavad Gita. And they don't know me, and I don't know them. Literally, I'm just a stranger who feels we should have a Chinmay Mission Center here. So I asked everyone, how many Purusharthas are there? And I put my fingers up like this, just to like, see what's going to happen. And they all went, for seven. <laughs> I prayed lots that night. <laughs> Dedication comes before sacrifice. You will not sacrifice anything unless you have a reason to sacrifice. So what does yajna mean? It means dedication. How do you know if you're dedicated when you don't know that you're sacrificing? You don't know that you're sacrificing, then you're dedicated. So all of the parents who tell their kids, do you know what I've done for you? Do you know how much I worked to put you through school? And all the kids are like, yeah, Vivek, you tell them. <laughs> See, that means we're engaged in sacrifice, but we're not dedicated. That's not yajna. We like to think it is, but it's not. As a parent, I'm very clear that we all practiced unconditional love with our infants. As soon as they got into group one, <laughs> that unconditional love stopped. Now our love is conditional, right? You're my child, live up to my name. <laughs> it's a fact. So dedication, pull sacrifice, but you don't know it, and so you don't announce it. You do not announce it. Think lots about that. Here's our next framework. We went through right actions. Right actions are related to the pancha karma. Now the right attitude. This should be called the pancha bhava. Bhava means feeling. But for the sake of alliteration, I'm going to use the word pancha kirti. Kirti means what you follow. OK? 
okay, how you should feel in these actions. Ready? I'm going from the worst feeling, which is still good, to the best feeling, the best attitude. Number five is sing, S-I-N-G, sing. While you're engaged in your actions, there should be a sense of singing inside of you, a sense of singing outside of you. The point is to be positive, to be positive. When you're exposed to positivity, you start to become positive also. Have you found that? I think I'm a positive person. And one day I was talking to someone who complains a lot. The person next to you. <laughs> and my wife was watching me. She was from a distance. And she saw that I started to like become more frownish and I started to complain. And when I came back to her, she said, what happened to you? You're not like this. But I allowed that negativity to have an effect on me. So as you go about your actions to be positive, these five bhavas or kirtis are really what bhaja means. Bhaja, like bhaja govinda, starts with singing. Number four, Seek, S-E-E-K. As you're engaged in your actions, think about what you're doing. Many people, they sing, even when they sing bhajans, but they don't actually feel whom they're singing for. Yes? So your singing has to be followed with your thoughts. Think about what you're doing, why you're doing, this is a way of being more active in that action. Bhagavan Krishna has shared with Rishi Uddhava, I'm leaving now, and I know you want to be like me, you want to be with me, so what you need to do is, as you associate, so you think, as you think, so you develop. See, singing is like associating, but that's not enough. Then seeking has to come, which is to Think. Number three is support. The next attitude as you go about your actions is support. Singing and seeking, they tend to be relating to your inner world, but support is where you act on it. You translate this emotion into action. I'll be a little bit more clear with you. Remember I talked about the workshop I facilitated on Sunday, finding sadhana in being busy. And I referenced a verse from Bhajagovindam. It was verse 27, where Acharya Shankara gives five sadhanas. Here's what they are, so this becomes a little bit more clear. Acharya Shankara says <coughs> the first sadhana or verb is Geyam. Geyam in English means sing. And what I shared with all of our seekers is, in the AM, study two verses of Bhagavad Gita. In the morning, before you go to school, before you tend to your work or errands, study two verses of Bhagavad Gita. Geyam Gita. Please note, I never said sing or chant, I said study. Studying is a way of where you relate to that more. Now, if you follow this, and I'm invited next year, I'm, I'm coming to the Masamadi camp, so I guess I am invited next year. If I meet all of you, and you take up this practice, in one year you would have studied the entire Bhagavad Gita, correct? It's incremental change. Do 1% at a time. Acharya Shankar says next, Geyam Nama Sahasra meaning Vishnu Sahasranama. And I told all of the seekers, at noon, around lunch, listen to one version of Vishnu Sahasranama. One version. If you have lots of time, listen to MS Shubhalakshmi. If you have less time, listen to like a fast forwarded version. 
And, and think about the implication for those who are working or at school. What do you do during lunch while you're having your lunch, if you have lunch? Being an extrovert. You're watching a screen, you're scrolling on your phone, you're having a meeting. Is that what you're supposed to be doing while you're eating? So if you play Vishnu Sasrama, you'll get your practice in being inward looking. And if you're around people who don't understand Sanskrit or don't identify with Hinduism, even better. <laughs> They'll think you're some sort of stranger. You'll have even more alone time then. <laughs> when I go on a plane like this, nobody wants to sit with, with me. And I'm okay with that. <laughs> I get more space to myself then. <laughs> so at noon, listen to one version of Vishnu Sasranama. Then Acharya Shankara says, Gayam. Then, dhyayam, good. Dhyayam means to contemplate. Shri pati rupam ajasram, which means, in the evening, this is what I shared, in the evening, remember one virtue of your divinity. Whoever your divinity is, maybe it's Hanumanji, maybe it's Ganeshi, maybe it's Gurudev, whoever your divinity is, remember one virtue. If you think of your energy levels, when are your energy levels the lowest? 7.37 p.m. on Tuesday, <laughs> Tuesday, July 25th, correct? <laughs> I find my energy levels are the lowest in the evening. You too, after you've worked, after you've gone to school, so it's at that time that you need an example of someone who's virtuous, resilient, patient, generous, to go on in that evening. Next, Acharya Shankara says, Nayam, Nayam means to lead, Sajjana Sange, which I share with everyone as, schedule, 1% of your time every week to study groups. 1% of your time every week should be scheduled for study groups. How many hours a week do you have? 168. What's 1% of that? 1.68. How many minutes is that? A little bit more than 90. The typical study group is 90 minutes, right? but you slowly get there, you go to the bathroom, afterwards you have a cup of water, so it's perfect. <laughs> perfect for one to lead themselves to a study group every week. You're with me? Okay, looking at me, what was the first practice? According to Acharya Shankara, I'm, I'm zooming into this. In the AM, study two verses of Bhagavad Gita. Next. Around lunch, you listen to one version of any Sasranama. Easiest is Vishnu Sasranama. Next. Correct. In the PM, when you just need more of an icon, you remember one virtue. You remember Hanumanji and how hard he worked, you will work hard also. If you remember Kumbhakarna, you will not work hard. <laughs> Correct? It's so obvious. <laughs> Number four. Schedule 1% of your time every week to study groups. That really means 90 minutes. 1% is so little and still we find exceptions not to be in study groups. And here's number five. Before I get into it, looking at me, what's the fifth, starting at five, what's the fifth kirti in this pancha kirti? Sing, which means to be positive as you're acting. Number four, seek. Think about it. Don't let this be a ritual. You want meaning, not money. So make this meaningful. Number three, support. You can't just say, I love you. You can't just say, I care for you. You have to show that. You have to act on that. So this is support. Acharya Shankara finally shares, Deyam Dina Janaya Vittam which means give to those who are needing help. And what I had shared with everyone in this workshop, that workshop and this workshop, 
contribute 10% of your check every month to visionary causes, to long-term projects. 10%. Do you know how much you should be giving of your resources according to Srimad Bhagavatam? 20%. Rishi Shukra tells Raja Mahabali, you should give 20% of your resources. It's called dharmaya, for dharma. What does Raja Mahabali do? He ignores him and gives everything. Poor opportunity cost, right? What did Raja Mahabali get back? Bhagwan. <laughs> Bhagwan became his security guard. Rishi Pralada became his guide. And all he had to do was give some money. 20%. Here, Vivek is changing that to 10% because we are, <laughs> we are Bali, not Mahabali, not <laughs> Raja Mahabali. <laughs> so 10%. But I've studied so much about this because I inevitably just have to fundraise. Do you know how much the Amer average American gives in charity every year? Less than 2%. Not 20, not 10, less than 2%. Acharya Shankar had brought this up 1,500 years ago. This is not a contemporary text. 1,500 years ago. So when I had shared support as your third bhava or kirti, as you're acting, your actions are supported. They're backed by your resources backed by more than just words. Number two, bhaja means sing, seek, support. What do you think the next S is? Serve, serve, S-E-R-V-E. S -E -R -V -E. This is where you're not only giving your resources, what's harder to give? Time, Time. yes. Great, you're giving your time in those actions also. Remember we talked about multitasking. That means you're not giving time. Puja Swami Tejo Mayananda has shared, children don't want presents, they want presents. They want you to be there. But if you live in an expensive way, that means you're doing something else and not being with them, yes? Time, if I can add one more thought here, is whatever you're serving towards, whatever you're serving in, this becomes part of your lifestyle. For how many of you, exercising is part of your lifestyle? You don't have to think too much about exercising because it's already built into your time, correct? For how many of you, coming to this ashram is part of your lifestyle? Right? So many of you, you don't think about it. It's something that you treat as, this is your responsibility and you come to do it cheerfully. Agreed? Like with CMWRC, you don't even invite me anymore. I self-invite myself. <laughs> See how I've made this my lifestyle. <laughs> so please think about that. This is, See how this bhava is becoming more robust. It's more about giving of yourself. And here's number one. Sing, seek, support, serve. What do you think the last S is? I think you said simplify. More than that. Surrender. Surrender. Very good. Surrender. You've given your resources. You've given your time. What's left to give? Your effort or yourself. In the Navada Bhakti, what's the last Bhakti? Nivedana. You stop giving stuff and you start to give yourself. It is where one surrenders the notion of individuality. I am not the deserver. I am not the doer. What am I? Just an instrument. We have to build into this bhava, correct? Build into this attitude with that action. As I'm going about acting, I should feel like I am 
an instrument. Nimitta matram. Bhagwan, you are the doer. I will do what you direct me to. Puja Swami Tejo Mainanda shared the most beautiful teaching. He said, imagine you're having a dialogue with Bhagwan, with your divinity. Okay, so imagine Bhagwan is right here, and Bhagwan is. So me and Bhagwan are talking, and I say to Bhagwan, I'll work, you worry. That is an awesome thought. I will just work. Everything else, you have to look after. You worry about what will happen, what will not happen. I'm just going to work. I'm your instrument. I'm your employee. I'm your dasi. Surrender your individuality. And one more thought into this before we shift into our discussion. When one surrenders their individuality, they become more effective and efficient at everything they do. In all of our corporate settings, everybody's talking about efficiency and effectiveness. What's holding us back the most is our ego. And if you don't have that ego, you will be a master of yourself and others. In the British Canadian legal system, there is a difference between a accidental murder and a premeditated murder, correct? And that difference causes a different ramification. It's called mens rea. What was the intention behind that action, or in this case that murder, that will determine the, the fine or the sentence? So even in our legal system, that attitude is acknowledged in that action. So if that's at a legal level, most definitely it's at an EQ level in a sacred science. Sing, seek, support, serve, surrender. Right actions, right attitudes. Tomorrow, our focus will be on the right atma it will be on who do you think you are who are you really oh